Hey, it's me, MLB. Here we are with chapter four of Touched. I like chicken is the title. I'm a bit sad though, he said as he ushered you out. When's it going to be my turn to hide? He added, still keeping that cheeky smirk. You blushed furiously. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Hawks, he said sadly. You keep finding me hiding. Well, I'm happy again now because that's the longest sentence you've ever said to me, he said with a smile as he flicked his wings out then pulled them back in behind himself. How did you know I was in there? You asked quietly yet curiously. I sensed you were there, he said with a nonchalant shrug. How? You asked, tilting your head. With my feathers, he replied with a smile. They can sense objects and people. I could tell you were there. Same as the first day I met you hiding in the closet, he said with a chuckle. I'll be honest, I thought you were a spy at first. Me? You squeaked in surprise. Yeah, he said with a chuckle. I mean, why else would someone be hiding in the janitor's closet? You pulled a face and looked down. Hawks laughed. Don't sweat it, he replied gently. I did a background check on you. You're fine, he joked. You what? You squeaked again. He chuckled. Don't worry, let's get the re these reports to Mr Ligma. He walked past you to the door and rolled his head back to look at you with those keen golden eyes. You coming? You followed after him and walked to the elevator. It was a comfortably silent ride up to the next level and you both stepped out and headed down the corridor. You like chicken? Hawks asked suddenly. You nodded and he looked at you. His face lit up. I love chicken, he said excitedly, pulling the cutest face you had ever seen. You smiled softly. He's so cute. I'm going to call you chicken, he said. Wait, what? I like chicken and I like you, so I'm going to call you chicken, he said with an endearing smile. Sorry, come again, you thought? He saw the surprised look on your face and laughed. What, you don't like it? He asked with a smirk. N no, it's okay, I like it, you said softly with a nervous smile. Okay, good, he said, looking down the hall. Well, here we are, he added as you both approached your boss's door. You just heading home after this, he asked casually as he reached up and scratched the back of his head while looking away. Yeah, you replied in your usually quiet voice. So you don't have anything on then, he confirmed. No, you said, quirking an eyebrow at his question. What's he driving at, you wondered. Cool, come to dinner with me then, he said calmly. You jumped in fright and blushed furiously. No, hawks don't do this to me, you screeched internally. When you didn't reply, he looked at you with his sharp gaze. Too much, huh? He resigned with a chuckle. That's cool. Maybe another time then? You nodded, relieved that you hadn't had to say anything. Okay, have a good night, chicken, he said with a smile before turning and strolling off down the hall, his bright red feathers swaying slightly as he walked. You let out a shaky sigh. Oh man, imagine going to dinner with the number two hero. That night, your dad seemed troubled. He was jumpy and on edge. You okay, Dad? You asked him, after he had jumped violently when the toaster went off. Yeah, I'm fine, he grunted, annoyed that such a small thing had startled him. What's wrong? You asked, not believing his words. He let out a troubled sigh and looked over at you. I think they've found me, he said in a quietly distressed tone. Your eyes widened. The government? You asked apprehensively. He nodded. I'm laying low, but a man came into work the other day and asked some pretty pointed questions. He even knew some of my relatives. Your guts twisted. What are you going to do? You asked nervously. I'm not sure, Yin, he replied, but if they do come for me, you're going to have to separate from me. You have your mother's last name, so they won't be able to track you down easily. Your heart ached. But, Dad... No but, sweetheart. I don't want them to get you. I can handle them myself, he said with a weak smile. But just remember, never use your quirk. Your quirk, lexical translation, was one of the most powerful quirks of its kind. By merely thinking a word and then touching someone, you could evoke that emotion or feeling within them. There were endless possibilities with this quirk. Depending on the word that you used, you could bring someone up or tear someone down, but it all depended on what that person was thinking of when you applied your quirk. For example, if someone was thinking about how much they missed a loved one that had passed away, if you thought of the word relief or thankfulness and touched them, then they would feel those emotions towards that loved one because that's what they were thinking of at the time. But if you wanted someone to fall in love with you, they had to be thinking of you at the time that you touched them with that word. This is where it could get problematic. What if they were thinking about their dog, a particular food, or someone else? Next thing you know, the person that you wanted to fall in love with you is all loved up about someone or something else. How could you tell if your quirk had worked? 
The person you used it on would say the word that you had thought of when applying the quirk, so you had a sign. Despite not being able to use your quirk freely, you would occasionally study up on the meaning of words just in case you needed to use them one day. The words needed to be emotionally geared too. You couldn't use words like run, tree or sleep. Your quirk wasn't a straight up brainwashed quirk. These were some simple and harmless applications for your quirk, but some of your relatives decided to get greedy and used the quirk for means of gaining power and money. When it was discovered that they had used their quirk to gain their wealth, they were interrogated and imprisoned or forced to work for unsavoury people. The quirk was tagged and everyone with this quirk was put on a special registry, a silent registry, for the government to use for their own benefit. Your grandfather had managed to give the government the slip and changed his name, keeping your family from being placed under surveillance and up until now, everything had been fine. As long as you didn't use your quirk, you were fine. Your mother was quirkless, specifically chosen by your father so that he could keep the quirk bloodlines pure. In a way, it was a quirk marriage, but they loved each other, so it had worked out well. You were on the quirk registry, listed as being quirkless so that you would be safe from the government. You'd had the quirk test when you were four, and all the results said that you had a quirk, but your dad had used his own quirk on the officers to make sure that they put down that you were quirkless. And that's why your dad didn't want you to use it. You understood all of this, but you still felt like you had been unfairly lumped in with your relatives who had done wrong. All you wanted to do was help people. You'd done nothing wrong. Why were you being punished for the crimes of your extended family? It wasn't fair. And that's the end of chapter four. Stay tuned for chapter five.